Hello there everyone and welcome back to more Total Warhammer multiplayer. It is time to dive back into the Empire at least for a little bit. And maybe if I'm feeling up to it I might jump over to Bretonians as they're kind of more the human faction I want to enjoy the most. Since they are more aggressive in theory with their higher prevalence on cavalry and of course the fact that they don't really have a whole lot of variety in their range weaponry and that just encourages them more to get more aggressive. But we'll worry about that later. Maybe I might even do a separate stream for that. That's kind of the plan. And I am trying to put in a little bit of effort to build some additional armies. I haven't really spent a whole lot of time on it as I don't really know what to honestly expect since I need to play more with these armies and I don't think these outriders are fitting what I have in mind. But I am starting to put a little more effort into having additional armies. This is just a very basic tweak. Kind of like how I've been doing it before. Just having it pre-built ahead of time ideally. But I, at some point I'm going to want drastically re reworked and completely different type of armies. I just have to get out of my comfort zone and play around with some of these other heroes and units. Essentially. For that to really start to click in. But... That will be in our time. I'm just going to focus more on my traditional army. And if I get a sense of inspiration, maybe I'll start working on a different army. Or a different variation. As I don't think I'm going to have the know-how to really make drastically different armies. Unless it's a, unless there's a certain play style I want to go for. Kind of like how Skaven, I have a rush variant which unfortunately did not perform to my liking. But it did still have some good victories in it. I can't feel too bad about it. It just feels like it's missing so much without the Clan Moldor type of units and options there. Never mind the possibility there are a couple of Clan Eshin units I could take advantage of as well. Either way, let's see what our opponent is. What type they are, I guess, or faction are going to play as and then work from there. As, was it, the last game I played way back when against Gladiator with this Empire Army seemed to perform well. Although, there was that weird, weird circumstance where, oh dwarves, good god. Hmm. How do I want to adjust this? Because I don't think I'm going to beat them in the range game too much. I don't feel like anyway, I could get some cannons to match them. I'm not really going to be an aggressive army though, and I definitely don't need the halberds at the very least. Oh god, one of those players too. I think I'm okay with going with two cannons. I don't think I need... I would like more great swords ideally. And cut down on range a tiny bit. And I, the sad thing is I don't think I have time to really completely switch out what kind of wizard I want. The sad fact of the matter is. But I don't need Foz. I don't need the net. So let's go with a buff of some sort. That could be useful there. I have a lot of abilities left over. And I can upgrade some units a little bit. Barely. Hopefully two cans are enough. I don't want to go too ridiculous in the range firepower, even though it might be warranted. If I'm completely honest, since dwarves aren't exactly going to flank me very much, and I can use these demigriffs to kind of break their line or at least cripple, start putting the hurt on them. It's going to be an interesting way to start off in the crossroads. I keep talking so much I never bother to look at the map and that's a problem I need to fix, dang it. A very simple map at that, which works for my cannons. I probably should hang back a bit, but there's always a likeliness they just going three ranged or siege weaponry. And that's probably not going to work in my advantage. I don't want to rely so much on going all out on the range, even even though this could be a matchup for it. Just do again the slower speed of the dwarves. 
I like to have a little bit of versatility and options. And as a result, two siege weapon is probably the most extreme or the most I'm going to commit. Until I'm ready to specialize into kind of a more armor, what is it? A more siege type of army. I just don't know if that's going to be Empire, if I'm completely honest. Just regular Demigriff Knights. They're anti-infantry and armor-piercing. Gotta be careful about the fact that they are pretty good against large units. And... Another thing I'm going to have to keep in mind is good control of my gunners, so that way they're always hitting ideal targets. Ideally. My cannons are not going to really hit a whole lot. Yeah, apparently it's, the range is not enough, but it is 450 range. I just got to be very mindful of how I'm going to position myself. Ideally. As if they do have siege weaponry, a lot of siege weaponry, I'm going to be forced to move these guys up and that's not going to pay out well. Even dare is not enough, in all honesty. Oh well, let's play it by ear. This is the first match I'm probably due to lose, let's be honest. It's kind of been my trend at the moment. Okay, so we got two siege... We got a couple of siege weaponry there. Gotta be mindful of that. And I wonder if magic missile might be useful. Let's see. What if three siege weaponry bolt throwers? There's 340, 440. Alright. So they have the same amount of range weaponry that match mine essentially. Although mines are slightly slightly higher. Just gotta be mindful of how am I gonna position myself in this kind of like stalemate. Hmm. I wouldn't mind them just wasting shots on the swordsmen. We obey. Ideally, anyway. Now Grudge throwers, let's start putting on the hurt. Although, gotta be careful. It's what am I trying to be careful of essentially? My cannons are in range, I'm gonna start shooting them. And I have a flyer to maybe do some harassment, but they got some thunders and all that. It's just a question, should I just be going after Is it the right choice to go after a siege weaponry? Because really, this is just a panic response, if I'm so serious. Because yeah, both of them... Yeah, because they're just demolishing this one can right now, which is unfortunate. And apparently my cannons are really tight clump as well. Got a good hit on that one cannon, but... Let's see if we can do some damage and magic missile him. Somehow, anyway. I don't know if this is a good idea, honestly, but... If it does extra damage, that's good, but... Yeah, they're just demolishing my siege weapon without even trying. Maybe the mistake was trying to split them up, but still. Hmm. No lingering. Go. And these are just slayers. Yeah, these are just slayers. We obey. They got rangers there. Yes, yeah, Sally. It's not looking pr promising, is it? For the 
I should be able to dodge those. We await your orders. I have greater mobility than them. Can I actually do something about it? Wishful thinking, I know. Oh, let's go after Iron Drakes. They look like a promising target. And let's get these guys moving forward. Iron Drakes are getting wrecked. I like that. I like the. Uh, I like that. How well that might be going. Although we gotta disrupt them more because they're about to shoot my guys too. All right, can we wreck? Alright, Demigriffs, get moving. Avoid the Slayers, ideally. And we'll split up, if possible. No, nah, not possible. Split up, actually, and they're grouped up, too. Yeah. Sadly, letting my lord take as much damage as he did was a mistake. Due to bad control, but... Let's get these guys in here. I don't know who's the best target, but... Uh, I should have waited till the Great Source got in there. That was a mistake. Yeah, speaking of which, where are my... Er, Demigriffs. Okay, they just slaughtered the Slayers. I like that. The Lord's alive... Where are my siege weapons doing? Okay, they just broke. That's all that was. Alright, get after the Slayers. I don't know if the gunners... Yeah, they are shooting at something. Just maybe not very well. And I, that would have been a good AoE time to heal, too, but... And there, kill the Slayers. Disrupt them. I guess that's probably the best I could do, even though it looks like I might be losing here still. The morale stats say I'm losing right now, and that does not bode well with me. Now we gotta figure out. Oh, I lost. I completely lost one of my demi grift squads. Damn. Everyone's crippled here. Let's deal with these iron drakes quickly. And if these riflemen can actually shoot something, that'd be great. Ah, uh, that should have been AoE again. But, let's see what we can do. Can we wreck these sl Slayers some? And also, since these guys are recovered, they can maybe get on the cannon. There, those are arcs I like to see. They are broken, are they? Okay, they're completely wiped out even. Yeah, don't like Slayers, so let's actually back hammer and fill these guys. And hopefully these guys can recover quickly. I would like some riflemen to kill the Slayers. Ideally. 
Carl Franz, you get to work. Disrupt, destroy. Slayers have been denied. And I haven't told them to focus down anything. So in theory, they should shoot at whatever they have vision of. Which is Belagar right now, apparently. Get the great swords out, even though that could be a bit problematic. Geez, you're getting wrecked right now. I know he had, like, no armor. I guess it was a stupid mistake to go up against slayers like that. I misused my soldier, my wizard, quite heavily. Dang it, I want you to just attack the infantry, but I guess that will do. I hope cannons are doing damage. Because Belagard apparently took no damage at all there. This is not looking good, sadly. Unless I can get some good range shots on Belagard. Attacking Slayers is probably not a good idea. I just want to disrupt them if possible with how thin they are and the fact that they just got broken. Yeah, shoot the Slayers for me, please. I hope these cannons are shooting, even if it may be only a single cannon. I'm getting the impression they're not, judging by the fact they're no, not in the arc. Come on, Ken. Okay, you are shooting, sort of. Just probably not very well. How are the Slayers doing? Hopefully, the swordsmen and riflemen there will at least take out those Slayers. And. Can Demi Griffs go and actually harass those ranged? They are incredibly isolated right now. I just don't know how to deal with Belagar just yet. Ah, And he had to break at a bad time. Because if he got all three of them, that would have been nice. Oh my. I guess the moral of that story, don't trust my siege weapons, actually do the damage necessary. Although, pro I probably hurt myself by having to shoot at two different siege units, dang it. I figured that would give me a little bit of an advantage due to the amount of time that it would take for all their siege weaponry to focus on one. And if I wanted to play an aggressive army again, I would have gone with the dang, uh, Bretonians. So siege weaponry probably was not the right idea. Maybe I should, well, if I... I could have gone with Grand Ears. I did have a Grand Ear before, and then I took it out. Outriders, anyway. They could have done a lot of damage. They're armor-piercing. I was just one wondering if there was a way I could actually be competent in the Siege game. Alright, Clan Pestilin. I wonder if there's a reason... Well, he, he has to make up his mind, I guess, first. He's taking Skaven. And as a result, I want some mobility. Do I even need Outriders for that? Since we're talking about Clan Rats. A lot of Clan Rats for the front line. I could do a lot of damage to the Gunner Runners. Not their Gunner Runners, but the Rattling Gunners. But I don't think I could safely get close to them for that. Yeah, and, and this is anti-infantry, so ideally it's... This is the unit I want against their infantry. And I just want crossbowmen, because that probably... I shouldn't have to worry too much about armor piercing, unless... At least with Clan Skyrie, you would think.
two outriders, three crossbowmen to kind of provide cover support for the lo the swordsmen. And I have the net for any harassment. It's just a question if that I actually need it so much now. And I can't get extra infantry unless I want spears. Do I want halberds here? Would I need halberds? Because that can save me a little bit of money. And maybe I can afford having... I don't have to worry about flyers, so foe seeker I can get away with. I need another 200 for more swordsmen. Hmm. How can I get an extra swordsman in case of like armored uh, units, storm vermin, and the plague monks? Although I am having a severe lack of anti large, too. In case of rat ogres. Although I'm expecting with Clan Skyrie a lot of ranged, honestly. I'm expecting. It's probably a foolish mistake. I don't have a lot of time, though. What can I cut out? I can cut out the horse. That sounds stupid. But it's an easy way to do this. As my light wizard's just going to sit in the middle and provide support, ideally. And he still, yeah, he has the exorcism, which should help with buffing leadership. And maybe deal with a little bit of fear, but I don't think there's a whole lot of fear to worry about. This is probably a terrible mistake, I won't lie. But to help deal with some storm vermins and anything that's armored, ideally. And then I have the Outriders to just harass and just outrun anything that they have that might be mobile. It wasn't a terrible match against the Dwarves at least, I just... It seemed like it was going well there for a while, but I was just getting trounced. Judging by the fact that I was lo I was kind of on the losing end of that spectrum, apparently. Even before we got halfway through that fight. At least that's what the gauge tells me. That's all I can really gauge it on, though. You guys are all set. I need to back. I need to back these units up more. The reason I had them back up to begin with is so it's easier to deploy them. I don't think I need the outriders together, ideally, but. They, they should work amazingly when they're separated. Ready, and I should be open to that kind of Sword micromanagement. Oh, I accidentally moved you, didn't I? That should be good formation there. Two great swords kind of provide support. Great swords. Once I have them positioned properly, that is. Demigriffs have a bit of an uphill climb. Which is a little unfortunate. I don't want to put both the demigriffs over here, dang it. Unless I just keep one in the woods. They're not hit in the woods is a bit of the problem. If they could actually be hit in the woods, that'd be kind of nice, but... I'm not seeing icons suggest it. Just a moment here, we got a bot to deal with. Just ban out the bot, although. Close that box, please. Thank you. Now, I gotta remember you can only walk on foot. Which should be okay. Should be. Ready, General! Sigma calls! We are Sigma's heirs! 
Yeah, where do I put the Outriders? Or really anywhere that can be good at harassing. I would love if they could be hidden, but they're not. It's a little bit difficult, I guess. And honestly, do I want the Outriders to be way over here? It could be good harassing, at the very least. Alright, let's get this going. Two brood horrors, three catapults. Now, can we rush in there and cause some problems? Although, brood horrors are going to be a pain. I don't really have good anti-large, but hopefully my range units can do some notable damage. And what's the speed of these guys? 95 versus my 84. So long as I keep them away from everything else, that's good. And their boxing as well, let's keep that in mind. Okay, their lord's getting crushed there, that's pretty good. I will happily take that. Now, let's try and breach through this as quickly as possible. Ah, uh, I thought it was their lord that just got... ...scared off, but I guess not. Come on. I hate that the box select is not working, but it worked out conveniently. Since I broke them really nicely with the Demigriffs. And hopefully the net did a notable amount of damage in having them be unable to reinforce. Alright, crossbowman, you know what to do. And hopefully, well, they're anti-infantry, but I don't think they're needed at this moment, hopefully. As this is going to be a nice route pretty quickly. Although, I need to wait for the big AoE version. Two assassins amusing. I'm hoping this is going pretty well, because we broke one of the... Broke one of them, at least. Now, go over here and help deal with the rest of this mess. It's a... It is definitely a clump, but their warlock is gone. Was gone, anyway. But hopefully we can kill off that doom wheel. Yeah, he's completely shattered. Now, I don't know what to do with these Outriders. Maybe they should have been over here in this cluster, uh, fest. And... Yeah, just break everything. Use your fear. Use your terror. And hopefully, these Swordsmen will do noteworthy amount of damage. Because I think I'm okay with the Brood Tours being tied up by just a single uh, crossbow squad. It's just a question if I'm using the uh, crossbow men appropriately. To kind of... yeah. 
let him chase after one crossbowman and then have the others ideally shoot at the other ones. Even if they are probably not the best equipped for it. Hmm. How do I feel about that match though? As I, I feel like maybe I should have been a little more aggressive using the Outriders on their their box instead. Because that's kind of what they're equipped for. They still arguably paid for themselves though. Either way, the few shots they did to help weaken their front lines before having them go after the Lord and their Brood Whores, I, they still did their job. A bit, it's a bit of a flimsy strategy for them though when they're relying on a lot of clan rats and slaves to kind of hold the line. Storm Vermin ideally would have worked so much better there, which is a lot of the reason why I want those great swords. I just sadly didn't have any anti-large, which I should honestly prepare for a little bit of that with how prevalent the Brood Whores at least have been. I think they're one of the more popular type of monstrous creatures for Skaven at the very least. Never mind all the other units I'm not having access to. Ooh, let's spice things up. And what is this map? At least I'm looking at the map, I just don't know what to make of this map. If I'm completely honest. There's a lot of water. I just could not tell you where I'm deploying though. I don't know who they're referring to. Who's this hello again fella? Either way, we have Wood Elves, we have Unknown, we have Skaven, High Elves. Although, it's going to be really tricky to figure out who my opponent's going to be anyway. I'm Because they could deploy anywhere. They're more than likely just going to focus on where their army is auto-deployed at, which probably means I'm either against Skaven or the High Elves, but even then... Let's take this a little seriously, or do we? Hmm. I really like the idea of the skirmishers. The outriders are a lot of fun if done right. Especially if I go up against Skaven, they can't catch me. I say that, and then the brute. I find out the brute horror can outrun me. Maybe I shouldn't get too excited. Hmm. I probably will downgrade one of the swordsmen to get another great sword, but riflemen are handgunners are the big question. I want to use them, but they are definitely like the rattling gunners, really tricky to utilize. Which is why I'm more inclined to go with more sk a skirmish fan a skirmish uh, infantry. A little more interactive that way. And they're anti-infantry. My halberds can be anti-large. That covers all my bases there. I'm just wondering. I do want another great sword in case of the high elves. That's really where my mindset's coming in here. And they can still be useful against... A storm vermin or council guard I go up against. I just gotta make sure the demigriffs do their thing. Hmm. Maybe having two grenade launchers is too much here. I have a lot of mobility units in. Was it 3,000? 5,000? Yeah, I have 6,000 without this one outrider. Can I get my archer back? Yes, I can. I could get another rifleman, actually. Hey, well, handgunner, I suppose. That's the proper term. Can I get away with that, though? If I can get all three of them to shoot targets, they would be amazing, but if they're going to be in the middle of my army, that's going to be a tall order. 
I just need to play with these handgunners more to really get a sense on how to get the most out of them. Of course, shooting at large creatures is without a doubt a good way to use them. Devil Magic Missile, I like that potential. I got some decent range. Got the Swordsman to help buffer. Oh, I probably should have put... Got that uh, passive buff every time I cast a spell. That would have helped with morale a little bit with my front line. At least temporarily. Oh. I was kind of expecting it to be all across the entire map. I guess this map is a lot bigger than I realized. And they're all... If I could deploy over here, that would be good for my Outriders. Well, actually, my Outriders have Vanguard. Who am I kidding? But even then, my Demigris could be useful in this corner, too, with all the water. Although, I get the feel I'm not even going to be able to put all my army here. Down on the low ground. As it's supposed to be over here, I believe. Somewhere around here is where I can fully deploy. And I get the feeling I'm not going to be able to put my whole army over there. And I think it's going to deploy me on this side from where the camera aimed me. They'll have the high ground, but I have a decent amount of open space and at the very least. I'm just going to have to be careful that... These type of team games like to encourage a lot of siege and range weaponry. Okay, there's Carl Franz. Oh god. We are I almost wanted to play on this side just because it's a little more convenient, but... How the hell can I... F I don't like going down here, honestly. Seriously, and the Wood Elf would benefit so much by being on the left. I have, I don't know if he's gonna pull, if it's gonna work out that way. But I, I want the Wood Elf to hopefully benefit from the left side. I just, I have not looked at the Wood Elves at all, so I don't know how effective or how much better he is in the woods. And because of this type formation, Swordsman. yeah, I almost wonder if I just be a second line. This is a terrible map for 3v3. At least just being spread out in general. Being super try hard, I would probably put my swordsmen, everyone behind their zombies. Have a nice synergy going on there with our armies. But I will admit, this is probably not a good strategy. But to be fair, they will also suffer a lot from the same effect. And I do have a decent amount of inf cavalry to at least get through here without being hindered too much. I do only have one Outriders. I don't know where the hell they're going to hide, though. Because, yeah, these are terrible hiding spots, aren't they? Well, that's better. Now I feel better about my life. Although, I'm wasting too much time talking as usual. Which, I don't feel bad about, but it's just compounding on this issue. Hmm. Gotta be careful spells because of how clumped up this formation is. 20 seconds. We are golden. Formation is not perfect, but I would argue that's more of a consequence of the map than my own control or my own placement. So if I can get up here quickly, I can backdoor him pretty well. And what are you? Just a phoenix. Arcane phoenix at that. Formation. 
avalanche mortars. These are only simple clan rats or slaves. I'm fine with that. I can take advantage of that. Come on, why are you not rotate? Or am oh I'm hitting the wrong button, that's why. Although that probably means their flank is really vulnerable. I just gotta somehow get some opportunity to do some damage on them. And I should be able to actually shoot these rattling gunners relatively safely. My subjects call! Moving now! Very well! Actually, let's force these rattling gunners to deal with me. Or at least their range weaponry. Because if I can attack the mortars, that'd be nice. Because I can ignore these guys, attack something, and hopefully get on out. Globity ears. No lingering. Go. Take position for the Emperor. Quick march. And what are they? Just rat ogres? Go. This is my command. Now, am I able to shoot these things with the arc? I want to believe I can actually shoot them without getting shot at in return. I feel like that's possible. And for some reason, I'm seeing those shots, though, even with that said. For at speed. Okay, I was scared for a moment. Quick march! Ready! Very well! Strike them down! For the Emperor! Yes, General! I gotta hurry. Time is of the essence, but. Nope. Arcane Take Phoenix, Arcane Pigeon is going to be annoying. And these guys... Okay, they are clan rats with spears, so they have defensive bonuses. If I can get to the Demigriffs, that would be useful. Uh, how, how much you want to bet, though, if my army falls... My allies fall apart is going to be due to my fault. Ashen Triads, they have defensive abilities. Get these guys in here quickly. Can we disrupt them no lingering. while they're all busy there? Because I don't think I'm doing crap against these rat ogres, sadly. Despite how opportunistic this is looking right now. Get at the avalanche mortars while they're distracted. And hopefully these things will hurt... Okay, I am snared for a moment. Which means we need to get some damage in really quick. I do have my armor. When does this... Okay, it just expired. Stand your ground. Soaked a lot of damage there, but... Now we gotta break these lines quickly. Somehow. I took those hits really well. I'm happy for that. But my demi grips are getting wrecked. And I think the game is slowing down due to the legs too, a little bit. I'm in the woods, so I hope I have a little bit of defense. Start crippling these rat ogres, because your damage has been crap trying to hit them. The 
arc's pretty bad, I will admit, but it's probably better just to go after the friggin' Rattling Gunners. You did good damage against them with your one shot. And this is Ica Claw, we could take him out. Alright, back off. You did some damage. Hopefully enough damage to be worth it. And actually get... Actually, what am I doing? Just get you guys in position now, because those Rattlegers are about to get into a line of fire with you. Brace yourselves, folks. This is going to be a while. Arcane Pigeon is in. How's the gaming? I lost against dwarves. I won against a boxing uh, clan uh, scryer type army. And now this, we're doing a 3v3, which I'm hoping I did enough to distract them, because right now I'm netted at the moment. Uh, I was hoping I'd be on the ground, because I was trying to attack Ica Claw. And without staying my ground, that was pretty painful, too. But I think we're about to break. I don't. Uh, let me not jinx it, because I have not looked at the rest of my army. But they could break, but I need to get at their ranged. Which hopefully these great swords could do. Call Franz, you just fly to safety, and yeah, this is just going slow. Halberds, I fear that this pigeon is just going to cheese res or revive its health constantly. Because it does have the mechanic after all, and you are armor piercing but not anti large. I should hopefully be good in, in that matchup. I'm hoping. Why are these rat ogres surviving so long? Jeez, I figured I would have done more damage to them, honestly. But we are scaring off the use here. Okay, we got some Sea Guard, which I gotta be mindful of. And until we get ourselves all clear, just go after the, just go after the Siege Weaponry. I call friends, you just get to safety and hopefully buff people up. And hopefully this is a good enough angle for my Riflemen. And I haven't been using my spells, I admit. But if I can get the spell off, I don't think I'm close enough, though. I'm nowhere near close enough, I'm just realizing. This would be a good opportunity to just hammer. Yeah. Yep, I don't think I can get at these catapults. Even though there's only two lords in the way, I should be able to run by quickly. In all honesty, I need to go after these, these mortars. Those mortars are probably doing a ridiculous amount of damage. What's your speed there, Arcane Pigeon? 91 versus my 112. I just gotta get my other riflemen to start shooting this pigeon. Come on, get out of combat. I know I've been doing some juking and jiving there, which probably doesn't help. But from what I understand, you can outrun them, and the staggering from the riflemen will help a little bit. Oh, speed buff is gone, and that thing is going 120 now. If I could keep hitting and staggering it, maybe I'm, I might live. Maybe. But their moors have been interrupted. We're on the losing end of things, judging by the gauge. Come on, stagger it some more, please. Because it looks like I'm not going to survive. Nope, sadly not. It was good damage, but not enough. And how are you guys doing? Decent enough damage, but now you need to find a, a proper target. And we finally, after God knows how long, broken into their their lines. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, the reason they messed up my Rattling Gunner was because of two, uh, was it the Warp, the Gale? The first one I actually weathered it incredibly well because it stands your ground and it took them so long before they even got turned around. But the second time, I, uh, I, I honestly thought I was on the ground because I told them to attack either the Ica, yeah, I told Carl Franz to attack Ica Claw and for some, I guess they managed to get the spell off before he got to ground, which would have perfect or protect him from a lot of fire. Never mind the fact he wouldn't have gotten snared at the same time. Nope. I don't think I can attack these ogres the best, sadly. And I'm wondering who these outriders even shoot at. Because I don't think that's a good role to use fire at Ikka Claw. Hmm. And handgunners are sh well, handgunners at least are doing decently due to armor piercing. This great swords actually took out the rat ogres. I'm fine with that, because the handgunners did not help. Oh, more mortars. I know for who to for you to go after. Now I I think this is a time where I rally everyone together. What are you fighting? Eshin Triads. I guess great swords. we know what you're going after. The range is all but broken. They could come back. And hopefully this will... Did that do enough damage? Can I just melee them and force them to break? Yes, I can. Group everyone back up. I did lose my lord, sadly, which is going to hurt quite a bit. Ready for war. Yep. They, they got lucky there with timing that Scorch, but it was only on a Swordsman squad, which isn't too terrible. I just... I have two handgunner squads and demigriffs, which are... If there's a chance for victory, there's good, they're going to be the ones that carry me because I'm doing a terrible job with my friggin' wizard. Sigma preserve us! And what is this? Just a chieftain? Oh, no, that just increased range, didn't it? So that wasn't all that exciting. Yeah, Demi Griffiths are getting wrecked by Giselles there, sadly. Unfortunately, I thought they would focus on staying, w keep attacking the gunners. Okay, did I fire a spell or not? Jeez. I guess they routed the Wood Elves enough to actually be able to focus fire me, unfortunately. Oh, and those are also the high elves, so... And my morale is starting to show itself with the loss of my lord. And the pigeon just regenerate all its health in that, all that time, did it? Or how did it regenerate its health? Because it actually doesn't re have a health regeneration ability. Oh, you just broke in, dang it, so... I'm not getting a good opportunity with this net. It wasn't even a net, it just cast, I'm realizing. Can I get the net off? Or am I just too far away? Sadly, no. Yes, sir. Quickly. I'm, pr I'm probably going to just lose this uh, range I fight here. This was looking like. Come on, Outrider. Select already. I hate that that icon is so big. Sigma, 
that it kind of actually prevents me from selecting my units when they rally. That was not the net. It's net it, but one of my riflemen are kind of uh, broken at the moment. And keep in mind, this thing is just going to likely regenerate its health, too. It's not going to be enough damage to make it worth it. There is again. The dang rally is actually blocking my me to select the... Handgunners. And another, I think the big reason why this w w is a loss is because I decide to actually deploy over here, trying to spread our army out, whereas all they did was box up together. Which again, is another. Which goes with my theory, after all, that all team games, especially in the quick match, at least one size a pre made group where they're organized and trying to work together with each other. I mainly went down here just so the Wood Elf would have the actual woods for their fighting. Since I kind of started my deployment over here. Never mind the fact that this is probably a terrible map for, map for 3v3 too. Come on. Thank you. We did good damage to the Phoenix, but... That probably doesn't help us much, but can we at least start shooting it? Let's turn off your skirmish mode, so maybe that way you don't lure them into my handgunners. Come on, Demi Griffs. Hang in there. We do have them surrounded, which could be useful. But we still have a bit of a deficit. Yeah. That squad just completely routed. I don't have my Celestial Wizard to kind of snare, but... I just don't... It looks like a loss, judging by his bar. But they are out of ammo. The only one that's really problematic is it kicked it could claw the chieftain and the sea guard. And I still got a lot of ammo on these units. I just gotta actually target appropriately. Come on, stagger this thing. I like when it gets staggered. And gunners, I saw I told you to attack. Now, let's see if this thing dies or not. Or if... Your Ikka Claw, you look like you're on a Doom Wheel or something almost. Oh no, that's just Teclas, okay. I thought that was uh, Ikka Claw there first. Sadly, we're not going to find out if I can kill off the phoenix as the handgunners are not going to get an opportunity to attack and swordmen are just going to die to the sea guard let me do what little bit of extra damage i can i don't know how the wood elf is doing because their lord's still in good shape but I just don't know the stats everything else. I could do a lot of damage if I'm able to fire all my weaponry, but... I don't think that's going to happen. Can I get one more shot on Teclas? Because he is like a, a crappy wizard after all. Especially if he has no mana. Is it a ridiculous idea? Okay, he's running away from me. Maybe I could shoot him down while he's slowed by the trees. Come on, kill Teclas. That is some really good damage there. To Quick, march. 
And that keeps the pigeon away for a while, but of course, crosswoman could be useful here for damage. Okay, they're running away. Actually, I don't think I want to shoot too deep in these woods. Because that's just going to obscure my shots. And you look who's coming back. And look who I'm going to try and hopefully kill. If I'm so lucky. The trees are blocking a bit. Knowing my luck, it's just going to regenerate its health. But imagine if it dies right now. If I could somehow get that luck. Since it's, what, a 50-50 chance? Oh, I see the health icon. Get everyone over here. If I can shoot the chief, that'd be good. The Glade Lord's a nice, easy target, but Lion's Sight's gonna be a huge problem here. It's probably better just to shoot the chief then. Yeah, and the health actually kicked in for the Phoenix, who's going straight for my gunners. Yeah. Sadly, that slight bit of health on Teclas. If only I got the kill there, he wouldn't have healed the Pigeon. Even then. The Pigeon would have regenerated his health more than likely, I think. But ultimately, I think we lost that just because I had the foolish idea of wanting to go on the flank when I probably should have been grouped up with everyone else. Although, really, if I got all cavalry or all large creatures, that could have changed that dynamic quite a bit. With how aggressively I could have flanked because I would not be hindered by all that water. Now, what is the map here? Okay, I think I've been on this map before. It's hard to tell. But, yeah, I think I've been on this map before. Just the shading for elevation is really odd. No. Okay, they're Norska, so rushing is going to be a bit of an issue. It makes me wonder if I want Outriders instead of the grenade, the grand Outriders. Or the Pistoliers is what I mean. Do I get spears or not? They're not going to have armor, so in theory I shouldn't need a great sword. I have the handgunners to help with large creatures. Pistolius could be good at harassing their uh, horsemen. Although, I don't know how effective their actual horsemen are. I just know I need something mobile so I don't just get run down and have my outr outriders actually do nothing. What kind of heavier unit can I grab, though? Because really all I got are spears and great swords. Unless I want cavalry, which I already got a lot of mobile units already. Hmm. I don't want to go too ridiculous on the range, but all I could... all These are really all, all my options. More cavalry, or just bring in the great swords. Maybe a couple spears in case of large creatures. But really, that's only my options. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of choice. It's just a question. I could switch out the wizard. It's a good opportunity to play with other spells. So let's try out the bright wizard. What ones do we keep? Fireball. Cascading Cloak, that's a buff. I think I'll just focus on the damage, especially something that's good against lightly armored units. Burning Head, strong against multiple units. Flamestorm. These are good against armor, which is probably why I'm not taking it. Which one do I want to gamble on more? more? 
the burning head or the vortex? And it begs a question. They could have trolls, so flaming sword's not a terrible idea, is it? Can they have trolls? I'm trying to remember if they can or not. And I don't have a mount. Bit of a problem here. And I want to keep these handgunners as I need some more armor piercing just in case. I'm just trying to figure out how can I get you a mount quickly. What can I cut out that I probably don't need? Norska don't have flyers, I don't think. That doesn't help much. Not on its own. I don't think it'll allow me to downgrade to a P Pegasus. I think we're stuck with this for now. Maybe I should seriously consider downgrading the Demigriffs. They have been hit or miss with me using them. But maybe I'm just being too aggressive with them at the same time, too. No. Let's see what we're up against here. Okay, I definitely recognize this map. We're just basically deploying the middle. Primarily. Pistolius probably go over here so that way they can use a little bit of the water to help slow down any units that might chase them. As I want to believe the Pistoliers could do decently against Marauder Horsemen. Unless they have like three or four of them maybe. I just don't know the stats if that's true or not. And of course we have to fight where the orcs inhabit. I don't think the orcs are taking kindly for this, or in all honesty, where the heck are the orcs? You figure they want to get in on this fighting. Show us the foe. Either way, that's near here or there. Oh, I want to actually deploy a little bit more to the left there. Because otherwise, my swordsmen are going to be hit by the slope. Gunners. Pretty self-explanatory where you're going. And archers are useful for the middle because they could just shoot over my infantry. Probably should have them a little more forward, maybe. Pistoliers, I think, can be decent over here because of the water, but... There's not really a lot of water I can actually exploit. Where do I put you in that case? We're really just harassing and maybe hounding any marauders. You should be good in that re exchange, hopefully. Now, great swords. Let's stop fooling around. Great swords. Let me actually sp try spraying up my formation a bit. Yeah, all my cavalry are stuck pretty much on the side flank, almost. Almost. I have 30 seconds. I could hide you behind the hills and hopefully you'll be hidden. That might be a good spot for you. Alright, let's see what happens. I got the wolves. Okay. These guys are large, but I don't think my demigriffs are up for a challenge on their own. And I can't remember if the werewolves have uh, regeneration or not. Twin tails, Comet! Quick march! 
Okay, they're about to break. No. Oh, that I don't want that. Because I realize that's a bad spell for those units particularly. Oh, I hope I did not mangle myself too much there. Get the demi griffs in there because I'm doing a bad job at the moment controlling this. And these are trolls. We are Sigma that was a terrible use of that spell there, essentially. Taking position for the Emperor. Sigma calls. Charge. All right, start counter charging. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, actually, because I don't know what to expect from these guys. Riders, you're doing pretty good against the rules. Get these guys flanking. Get the shooting. Can we wreck these guys quickly? Yes, just break them, ideally. They are also regenerating. I think I gotta keep that in mind. Oh, and I lost one of my pistoliers, apparently. I did not expect that at all. Murdered him. I gotta remember that they're regenerating, so I need to deal with them. I need to take them seriously. I'm doing this wrong again. The winds glow hot. Ready for war. Come on, fire. I don't know how difficult it is to throw a fireball at something that's right next to you, but okay. At speed. This is my command. Sigma preserver. All right, Demi Griffs, you get back over here. They're broken temporarily, but... The burning Wizard's getting wrecked right now. But he'll survive, I hope. And who is this Ulf... Okay, Ulfgar the Wanderer, which... I'm not sure how effective he is, but... Hopefully we can do something about these trolls, because the regenerating health is a bit problematic. I might very likely be losing due to health regen. Stop skirmishing, get your protection going. The hounds are out completely. Wolf Grin is out. Now show the trolls the door, so that's a way for me to deal with this health regen problem. And get these guys back in here, ideally. Scare off the trolls, that's all I want. It's a good way to deal with the regeneration. It might take a while, but it's a much more permanent solution. Pistolius, I hope you did well. You paid for yourself, that's a good sign. Alright. Crossbowmen and swordmen, you switch positions. They're regenerating health and I don't like it. Okay, they're completely broken. 
Okay, that is over. I used my wizard terribly. But primarily, that was because he didn't have a friggin' mount. I want to get him one. And even then, he still kind of paid for himself. I think. Carl France paid well. Swordman. Swordman did surprisingly well. Great swords, not so much, sadly, but... One of them still had plenty of help for fighting, really. So I think they still did perform well. Handgunners did well. Demigriffs performed amazingly against the skin wolves, it looks like. And sadly, I did not notice that one of my pistol ears got routed so early, but... They performed well enough against their wolves or hounds. I just don't know if that was the proper unit to go after. Their ca- what is it? Their horsemen marauders at least had weak armor, and so did the wolves, so... They still would have been decent either way. I just figured the second squad was actually safe because I routed the hounds early on when they committed to chasing me. I did not see what happened to him after the hounds ra rallied, though. Otherwise, I enjoyed that match. It was terrible control with my wizard, though. And that flaming skull, sadly, was inconvenient because that would have been a lot of good damage on their trolls. They just had to conveniently break my swordsman in at that point. If I was a little bit faster, never mind how useless my sword of ruin. Yeah, flaming sword of ruin, I believe, was what the spell was. Kind of did absolutely nothing because I was supposed to put them on some great swords. Or on the demi Excuse me, or on the demigriffs. Anything that was dealing with regeneration, regenerating units. And really, there were a lot of them. There were like a bunch of skin wolves. One of which I even think was a hero. And yeah, they actually had three skin wolves of some kind, I believe. So hero, or maybe they were armored, I can't remember. And then two squads of trolls, it looks like. There was a lot of regeneration I could have taken advantage of. Or abused, anyway. And I did absolutely nothing with that wizard. At least it was the right choice to take him. I just gotta do better about using him. Although it honestly was also the first time using him as well. I kind of committed a life wizard. And... The wiz the lore of heavens, essentially. And the lore master of Hoa for my elf team. And what is this map here? I am looking at the map. I just don't know how to translate this map. As it looks like there's two impassable p train pieces here. For the image, but I... For a life of me, I can't see where they are. Which is a bit of a problem. I can only... Well, it's the Sovereign Chaos Waste, so hopefully it's nice open terrain, even though this picture is suggesting otherwise. Skaven. Let me actually try and use this alternate army, even though it's still technically kind of similar. These are cro- Okay, these are armor-piercing outriders. I- I think I'm okay with them. They are gonna get run down pretty well. No. Make up your damn mind. Next, they're gonna immediately queue, aren't they? I want a lot of anti-armor. Which I do have the gunners. I do want a hell blaster. It is armor piercing, but not necessarily anti-large. I have the outriders for the sources. I need more. I really would like another great sword.
I just don't know how I can afford another great sword unless I downgrade the demigriffs. Which even then. Unless I go with the knights or Reichs Reichsguard. Let's see, Reichsguard or inf both of them are anti infantry. Is this a terrible idea? Probably. And I still don't have quite enough. I have downgraded quite a bit in my mobility, which I don't know if I like it. But they should be pretty good if I... well... They're only going to be good for Hammer Anvil. Maybe I don't even have any of them. Any cavalry, and just rely on my Skirmish Cav. A little bit. It's just a question of... I do need Armor Piercing. So let's just go with regular Outriders. I do need something to protect my flanks, though. So one Demigriff squad might be good there, and that affords me the great swords I want. Alright, this might be decent. Demigriffs are kind of relegated to deal with any kind of harassment, though. While the Outriders hopefully do damage to their main body. Hopefully. And they can outrun the Chameleon Skinks pretty well. I just need to figure out where they are. If they have Pterodons though, it's going to be really tricky for me to fire or attack with these things. Since they're likely going to get charged constantly by the Pterodons. Which is why if good use of this Light Wizard could be useful. Alright, hopefully we gave them enough time. This is an unusual situation where I'm the one to start the battle. Actually, I could just ask. I don't know if they'll actually hear that very subtle tone, but... I'll make the attempt at least. Now I do like the armor piercing potential here. They're gonna be used these outriders are gonna be good against the um, Carnosaur or Stegodon, maybe. If I could somehow keep the Hellblaster alive, that could wreck some fools, wreck some monsters. That's ideally the dream we're trying to play with a consistently range-based army. Just to know how to best protect my units, especially with very little improper defense besides my demigriffs. Ideally, some halberds would probably be better, at least more affordable. Hmm. I wonder if I actually downgrade the demigriffs for that very reason. Although, I can get two of them and then I have a bunch of money to spend, which I don't think helps me. Although, being able to boost people's morale, especially with psychology, probably a foolish idea, but I'll take the two halberds, try it out without cavalry, and this gives me the means to deal with the psychology, at least uh, slightly, with their monstrous creatures. I just have almost no mobility, so I'm going to be relying on these Outriders a lot. Hopefully they are the right choice with the armor piercing. And do I want extra spell on you? Boss protection is not really needed. Unbreakable for 22 seconds could be fun. I don't know if it's ideal. And I could drop two of these guys and get another great sword. 
this might be over minutes, I will admit. But at least it's a stronger front line. Yeah, now I have reason for Fa's protection. Ah, dang it. I was hoping to rank up something. Oh well. I have decent amount of armor piercing. Wow. Okay, I was gonna say, that's a pretty barren map compared to what I was looking at. I just don't know what exactly I'm fighting on, though. But ideally, Outriders harass any monstrous creatures that they may have, or just shoot down at their sources if there's nothing else. Okay, that picture was pretty much a lie. This is as barren and flat as you can get. Which makes this battle pretty damn simple and straightforward, doesn't it? Hello there, kitty. Maybe just for you, after this battle, I will play with some elves, because I know you like them. Since I have been playing a lot with the Empire, which is more kind of the... Renaissance type of steam... I, I don't know what kind of era these exactly are. I Yeah, the Renaissance era, I keep wanting to say. I don't know if that's accurate or not. And I have to remember, remember I have three great swords, which are going to be important here. Our weapons are yours. I want the Hellbirds actually in back to protect, ideally. Great swords. Actually, here we go. I still fear having three great swords might be an overcommitment. I fear that a little bit. But this hopefully will be okay. Hopefully. I'm gonna be relying heavily on these outriders though. Hellblaster is gonna do a lot of work if it can be protected. And and I gotta keep in mind that keep my skinks can come from anywhere due to the fanguard positioning. Ready, my lord. We are Sigmar's heirs. To me, man. Now. By Ulrich's wrath. Actually, I want these guys back here because of fanguard. Although at the same time. I do want the Hell Blaster to be protected even from. even then. Alright, let's group everything up. Actually, I'm doing this wrong because I don't have any uh, demigriffs, so let's switch this up for convenience sake. Barrel Carnosaur. This should be nice and simple. They do have a good handful of skinks. Which begs the question of where are their chameleons? They have 40% resistance, so maybe this is not a good idea trying to go after them. But Hellblaster, what can you shoot at? A lot of stuff. Yeah, just shoot the slan. Might be a terrible idea, but shoot the slan. And then we'll see about dealing with this, uh, Rider pretty soon.
All right, get in there. Alright, get back there, get protected. Deal with that car sword quickly. Wreck the slant. Yeah, get the great greatswords in there. Because, yeah, they're pretty... They're pretty resilient. And we need to buffer this line pretty quickly, so get Carl Franz in there while the Hell Blaster does its thing. No, just run. Nope, here comes company. Although I think the damage has already been done with their slam about to die, but can I melee him quickly? Halberds sadly are being flanked, but... The Lord is dead. That was still worth it. It may have only shot a single hit, but god damn, it still got it still got its money worth. Oh yeah, and I forgot about my net again. Because I'm not used to its cooldown, but we can fix that in a moment. And we're just gonna use it on the hero. Sorry, fella, you are netted. I, now I just gotta know how long the cooldown is gonna be. Nope, oh, Carl Franz is getting wrecked. Fall's protection. Buff up the halberds. Yeah, they are enraged. That's like the best thing I could ask for right now. That Carnosaur is not going anywhere because of its own primal instincts. Although I still sent 20 of my guys flying. Okay, this is becoming a very quick route. Yeah, they just left. That went amazingly well. The Hellblaster did just enough damage and it still didn't die. This thing is like a thousand gold, and it paid double. If only I had the awareness to keep in mind that my net could have been available to deal with the cold one riders that tried to rush them. But it was still amazing value. Because that Scar Veteran did absolutely nothing. The Light Priest did almost nothing, but then again he's a healer. He generally is pretty much doing nothing a lot of the time. All their big creatures got screwed. That was nice, clean, and solid. I could be happy with that game. It's just a little better awareness is really all I could do. Since after all, once they got past the halberds, it was really awkward after all. Trying to pin down their monstrous creatures. But I did make it problematic for them, as I think. Because of that micromanagement, they weren't really paying attention to their slam the best. Oh, and it wasn't actually a life priest. Or, it wasn't really a life slam, it was actually the light, I believe it was. As there was that shield effect going on, that little dome. Which I don't think you get. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's a light or maybe a heaven spell. I'm not sure. Well, of course I'm sure, damn it. I've been playing with a heaven uh, priest skink. After all, I should know for a fact because I've been playing with the Heaven Spells. It's, that, it's either Light or some other Lord I'm completely oblivious to and haven't really tried out yet. Oh, I'm an idiot there too, aren't I? Because I had a Light Wizard for that match. Unless, so now I don't honestly know what spell that was, that dome. Oh, I, never mind, I know what it is. It's an actual ability, isn't it? It's the slam ability that kind of protects and does damage resistance to anyone underneath it. Okay, so I'm not crazy after all. I just had a very long-winded sentence to get to the accurate, uh, the accurate uh, commentary or the accurate uh, information. 
Hello there, Medoras. Everything is going well. I'm trying to play around with the Empire a bit and ideally have some fun with some range weaponry. And good god, those Hell Blasters can wreck things if they can fire constantly. But I'm thinking just for Kitty, if she's still there, I might play with some Elves. Just so that way she won't get mad at me for later. Even though we're not really looking up close towards the elves anyway. And if I played as Empire or Bretonis instead, I don't think she would notice. Ooh, nice. I don't know ab I don't honestly know about oh, of the other Total War games all that much. And I don't know what to expect from them, but I'm definitely enjoying the Total War Hammer. Can you blame me? It's a lot of fantasy, it's a lot of monstrous creatures, which single-handedly you don't get a lot of monstrous creatures in the historic type of Total Wars. Unless they're giant war elephants, maybe. Which, let's be honest, are nowhere near as exciting as a giant friggin' T-Rex. Or dragons. Definitely dragons. But... Yeah, naval battles could be interesting. I wonder how that would even work for multiplayer if they ever implemented that in the Total War. It would go, it might function in completely different rule set, or at least would function differently. It would have its own competitive section, because everything you learn with, with the land armies probably no longer apply for the boats, the naval battles. All right, 1v1. I didn't see a response from Kitty, so maybe I avoid playing with the High Elves. Just the spider. <laughs> Hi, kid there. We'll play with the High Elves. Something to mix it up a bit. Although, I am definitely tempted to play with a little bit of Bretonians to mix up the human theme a bit. Which is a lot of the reason why I want to focus on ranged weaponry. Because Bretonians fit a lot more with what I want with a cavalry, more aggressive type army. And speaking of Bretonians, that is what we're up against. Now, this looks like just low slopes, nothing too drastic, and a nice little pillar here to cause problems. I'm at least learning to look at the damn map. But I do have a lot of spearmen. I don't think I need sword masters for this, and they immediately ready up. That doesn't surprise me. Now, chariots are anti infantry. I can get the sea guard as an easy solution to the Bretonians. What can I do with the extra 100 gold? I'm fine with these spells here. Hmm. What can I do with an extra 100 gold? Ooh. Let me get stand your, stand your ground. It's not all that exciting, right? I think this is a bad choice, but I have very little time to really consider it. But I think the Sea Guard are going to be good as a, at least to protect against Heavy Cavalry. Almost everything I have is anti-large, which may be a mistake if they go a lot of infantry. As I honestly don't know what the range base type armies like. But I do have a Bolt Thrower. That should be pretty good there. And I'm really hoping I can do some work with this Phoenix Guard. Aside from when I was first playing with the High Elves, I don't think I ever played with the Phoenix Guard at all. I'm excited to see if they can do work for me, especially with an army that emphasizes a lot of cavalry. I really hope I can make them work. Now, where the hell is that pillar? Oh, it's way over here. It's actually a giant tree stump. Now, I think I want to deploy somewhere here, so the siege weaponry has good line of sight. Spearman. 
be mindful of them just to readying up really quickly. Orders received. Spearmen. And otherwise, unless say, they have a lot of ranged weaponry, I probably am just playing very defensive. Outside maybe the chariot. And of course the demon pr the dragon princes. I don't know why I call them demon princes. I'm just gonna get outcasted just by that comment alone. But Dragon Princes could be aggressive, but I think I want them as a response to any flanking maneuvers they might do. Actually, I want the Sea Guards way over on the side because they can protect themselves. Now, there's a. I don't think I want to go over there with the chariot because it's kind of a s slope. I don't know where to put the Phoenix Guard, in all honesty. Outside, just put them here with the Lore Master, and hopefully, they can do decent responding. All right, I think we're set. Where do I put the Dragon Princes? I would like to gamble that they can hide behind these trees, but I don't think they can pull it off. If they can... It depends where they deploy, honestly. If they have any units on the low ground here, they're going to get spotted, but I would like to gamble. Maybe these guys could stay hidden long enough to get into the woods. If I can even hide in the woods. Now, I am eager to see what I could do with the Phoenix Guard, and actually, should I just switch these guys' as roles or position just to give the Sea Guard a little more opportunity for shooting? And speaking of which, turn off skirmish mode for these guys, as I'm not expecting them to run away all the time. They're going to stand their ground. Now, moment of truth. I don't know what the army is. We can expect a lot of a decent amount of cavalry at least. I just don't have the best for dealing with their infantry. Well, that's actually not true. I have a lot of ranged. And the bolts row can also be decent. I'm just wondering if I automatic Yeah, I don't think I switch over to multi rounds yet. Because their infantry is so cheap, I'm probably not going to get value. I, th I think the bolt thrower just goes after the cavalry once they get in range. And from there, we'll see what happens. Although, I guess, I guess I'm going to hit the button then. Don't want to rush them, but we'll see what happens. There's not much else to really say. Wow! I didn't realize these guys have magical attacks. After all this time. They don't- they're terrible at armor piercing though. Well, really it's about 50-50. Pretty- well, not not even that. But... That's something I definitely need to keep in mind. If I'm worried of dealing with, with ghosts or other ethereal type of units. I hope they're ready. For duty. I hate to have rushed them. They have two siege weaponry. Moving which up. is going to be unfortunate, but... Proud 
And which kind of can which ones are these? Bless trip. It's something a little bit different. Can I do some damage on them somehow? Okay, Luen, and is this a goon squad? Yeah, it's a goon squad. At once, Eagle Claw, by your command, Uria, agree. Come on, get moving there. It is not possible to get to ground because there's literally nothing to fight against and dang it! Right away. Ah my, this is unfortunate. Because there was nothing for me to attack, I couldn't even get to ground. Yeah, that is unfortunate. You could still... Am I actually doing nothing to Luin? But, let's get everyone in here. Yeah, if I could get the ground, then I can interrupt and do a lot of damage, but... That's a bit of the problem. He's playing... He's taking this cheese to the extreme because he's not actually attacking me. I'm forced to have to take the siege weaponry, because he's... Outside of his goon squads, he's like... Entirely ranged at the moment. But can we do something about this still? Understood. I have silver shields after all. Loyal. They are back. I can get my spearmen to kind of tank a lot of these ranged shots still. Eagle claw. I, I just gotta be patient about this. I could take the range shots incredibly well, still. Swiftly, we go. Tearing up chariots. Swiftly. Asher, advance. Black Oi. Assyrian guides us. So they're going after the chariots. Can, can I actually use this window to attack them somehow? Or at least start pr moving forward. Because chariots just got marked, so... They have good speed, but not enough mobility here. I kind of need to turtle up to essentially deal with this the best. Let's just deal with the range as best we can. And if we can force a micromanage, then this could... This could go decently still. I just gotta watch. Can we do damage to these guys? Because I am in defensive position. I have a lot of anti-large, but I do just have a vulnerable... I do have a very vulnerable bolt thrower. It shall be done. Understood. You're in there. And these are just peasant mobs. We don't even want to go after them yet. In fact, I want to just melee. I want to save my ammo for the actual air infantry. Ideally. Just break everything and 
take out this trebuchet immediately. I could probably still do a lot of work if I'm patient about this. Can we do enough damage here? Understood. Acknowledged. Although, gotta get these guys safe. Negate the charge defense. And hopefully, I can hit hurt these things. Yeah, they're poisoning me right now, so Phoenix Guard are pretty limited on what they can do. Dragon Princes! Love and Seagard! Lacoy! Moving out! Defending order! Move! Onward! Go after Trebuchet Move. and just Swiftly. force as many use out as we can, because they're about to run out of ammo. I could do some decent damage to the horsemen, but not a whole lot. And they're about to be out of ammo, at least. Hope we have one of the paladins in here. Can I get these guys out? Does not look like it. Come on, Dragon Princes, get on out. This is where all their money's at. Everything else is kind of breaking. And my spears should do decently enough, but... It's hard to gauge how to best operate this. Because I haven't attacked while well, their lord's been regenerating, let's be honest. Servant of the tower. It's not like I haven't been trying to hurt their lord, he's just been regenerating. I don't think I'm facing this the right way, but they had a terrible charge regardless. Swiftly, as you say. Understood. Of They're bringing in everything, and guess what? Outside my terribly scattered position, I should... Been... I can't AoE. Oh, my, my lore master just broke, so I can't buff. But I want to believe these guys are equipped to deal with large creatures. And they have a lot of large. I just gotta get them to rally, and losing the Lord certainly hurts. Uh, my lore master is completely gone now, so I can't heal. Can we just break these Pegasus quickly? Because I'm really strong against their units still. I just need the formation. Pay. 
I'm trusting the Phoenix Guard to carry me through this. There's a reason they're a beastly unit. I just gotta make use of my archers. As you say, we go. Yes. Moving out. Brace. Brace. Get everyone in there, keep breaking them. I am surrounded by peasants right now. And a spearman out in the middle of nowhere. Two spearmen out in the middle of nowhere. They could have been really good for this situation. All right, we got more archers. Dragon princes are back. Get the Phoenix Guard to safety temporarily. While I hopefully get myself regrouped. Yeah. I don't think it's enough damage, though. Mainly because these spearmen are out of position. Having those two extra, extra squads would have made the difference, indeed. But we have reinforcements. Phoenix Guard are about to break. Yeah, it simply comes down to these two spearmen. Two full health spearmen squads would have been amazing. If I had noticed them. But they're gonna have no reinfor they're gonna have no one else to support by the time they get there, I fear. Pals is almost gone. Acknowledge. Draw back. Yep, they're just breaking naturally at this point. This still could have been a victory. I just did not know those two. Just because of the numbers advantage they had. That's a shame. They committed to that cheese fully and it was a flawed strategy. I just played badly. Unfortunately. Since they relied so much on their air units and they had one mobile skirmish cav to keep them in the air whatever was convenient and so long as that skirmish cav was still available still around then they wouldn't be forced to go to ground because there's a mechanic for that that is unfortunate if only I had noticed that uh, goon squad sooner although even then there's no way I can go to ground to save, save them properly. All I can really do is just maximize the damage. Alright, simple solution here. Some anti-armor. How many uh, white wolves can I get? I don't even think I get the bolt thrower with that said. That is decent. They're gonna have... I, I think I get armor to protect my own archers maybe, or do I just straight up outrange them? That's the only thing I'm not sure about, but... I have enough money for pretty much anything. If I need to upgrade. I could get an eagle. I could get more infantry. How useful is the eagle even going to be? Because Star Dragon is not going to do me much and it won't even let me have the option to upgrade it. All 
I'm just honestly wondering how useful that would be. Stand your ground, armor piercing. Bane shield could be useful, but... I can get one more uh, white, white lions. I think this is a lot of armor piercing potential. Even then, with that goon squad there. I feel like I still should have been able to win that. I just gotta make sure they don't pick off my my units too easily. Because that's, what, 7,000, 8,000 units worth of troops that aren't doing crap if they're in the air still. I just had to slowly advance and just eventually take out their main ground forces. And just having two full squads of spearmen would have at least served as amazing buffer to keep my phoenix guard from getting surrounded. That is unfortunate. Oh well. Live and learn. It I lost that more because of my own uh, playing badly, as opposed to them just gooning me. And I think, ultimately, that's a net positive for me. Understood. Now, don't know how to best position my formation because I don't really, I don't think I want to go down to the low portion of the map. I don't like this formation at all. Especially since I have to make room for the archers, but they're they're probably going to be hanging in the back quite a bit. Ideally out of range of all their weaponry. And as a result, I should be free to just shoot them. Even if it's not armor piercing. Dragon Princess. White Tower Guardian. Battle ready. Yep, wrong group. We, will obey. we are golden, we are set, let's give this another go. Four cans, we just rush them down. What are they? They're anti-large. Are they just gonna try and focus on my lord? I can dance all day so long as I pay attention, which is honestly pretty tricky to see when their cans are flying at me. The longer they shoot the Lord, the better. Yeah, really, I'm just watching for the blasting of the gunpowder. Up oh, there, still shoot my lord, that's fine. Again, the more time they spend shooting at this, and if I keep them alive, the better. Because, just like our goon squad, fella. This is... Very flawed strategy, although I may not be attacking the best. Can we get in there and do the damage necessary? Because my sword masters are not going in there, as they should. Oh, 
Oh, my lord's still getting pummeled. Lord is dead. We're gonna have to be careful of that, cause that's gonna be very painful, dang it. Sadly, it's a little late for my units to start getting on the cannons. Come on, where's my AoE for this? Can you get those harpoons quickly? Because the lore's getting wrecked. Blade Master's damaging him. It's just a Slayer Lord at that. Okay, we're slowly starting to break them. Slowly, but it might be too late with the morale penalty as the Lord survived. Dang it. Yeah, they're just getting surrounded by dwarves at the moment. I don't say killing their lords can help, but dang it! My dragon princes are getting demolished there, even though they did a number on their torpedoes. Can we do it again? Can we kill the Slayer King? Because he just jumped into everyone. And my Dragon Princes are about to interrupt three of their range units. Which I think is pretty good there. Oh, who just fled? Come on. Can you die already on Grim? Their lord's dead. I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference, but... Hopefully. Yeah, just kill the torpedoes. They're armor-piercing. I need my uh, dragon princes. And hopefully these long beards are getting wrecked by the flanking arrow shots. Dragon Princes are fleeing, are they? Nope, they haven't fled yet. It's just everyone else who's fleeing, sadly. Alright, scare off these units. Try and recover. Try to rally. They still have multiple cannons, though, to just pummel me with. So trying to rally is a terrible idea, sadly. Swordmaster of Hoef, moving out. Make Ulthwan proud. They're all routed. Longbeards are still alive, sadly. If they can rally. Yeah, they're all rallying. And they only have one melee unit. Potentially, I could just overwhelm them. Potentially, if I do this right. 
Although, my morale is suffering. I'm just gonna break before I even get in close, it looks like. Which means we force them to stop shooting by attacking all their range. I think that's a good compromise. Now get these guys out of here. Archers. Kill off their cans quickly. Ideally. Forward. Onward. Forward. Swiftly. Can we break these cans? At least get them off the cannons and then we can go after everything else. Now we just do this dance again before everything starts breaking. Dragonites go after the archers and torpedoes and everything else on the final uh, iron long beards. Make them squeal. Although I do need to try and get someone to flank and surround. Are these guys? They're decent melee combatants, so I should not get carried away. I just want to disrupt them, so that way hopefully they're not attacking me while I finish off their long beard. Oh no, don't tell me I'm still gonna lose. I just want to kill off this long beard. And I'm actually not gonna kill the one long beard. All my units just couldn't defeat the one long beard, dang it. Ah, that's over, dang it. I guess I'm just terrible at this game. That's the only conclusion I could come up with there. I should have been able to deal fr four friggin' cannons. But it wasn't meant to be. All my armor piercing couldn't get through for their long beards. Of all things. It's a bit of a shame. And of course, I didn't keep my lord alive as long as he probably should have. Because I didn't. I underestimate the range on those cannons. Ah, uh, well. That will be the end of the stream there. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I will see you next time.